they called me Habib Ali London because I lived in London in the 70s. And he said, I'll tell you, he was an old man. He's maybe nearly 80. Very beautiful man. And he said to me, when I was there in the 70s, there was one man on my street, he used to call me Paki. I said, I'm not Paki, I'm Yemeni. <laughs> he used to call me Paki. He was racist. I never said nothing bad to him. I was always kind to him. But he always called me Paki. And he caused trouble between me and the rest of the neighbors. Anyway, one day, I didn't see him. He said, where's he gone? Nobody's calling me Paki. I went and knocked his door. His wife opened. She was shocked. I said, where's your husband? She said, he's, he's fallen ill, he's gone to hospital. I said, which hospital, which ward? She told me. He said, I took him one apple and one pear. Put it in a bag, went to hospital. He said, when I entered his ward and he saw me, it was as if he saw the angel of death. And he was like, you out of all people have come to see me? He said, yes, because my Prophet ﷺ taught me that I should honor my neighbor. And from honoring my neighbor is knowing about the welfare of my neighbor. So he, sat, he said, I sat with him. And a short while later, I picked up the bag and I gave it to him. He said to me, what's this? I said, this is a present for you. He opened it up. He said, one apple, one pear. He said, the man began to cry. I said, what's wrong? What are you crying for? He said, my children came to see me. My relatives came to see me. Nobody bought me an apple and a pear. They came empty handed. And you're the one who I always insulted and abused. You came to see me and you bought a present for me. Have you in London said? Then he came back home. I left him with the Quran and I left. I don't know what happened about the man after that. But he's done his job. Well, you krim jara. Honor your neighbor. Honor your neighbor. And Muslims are known to be the most hospitable, honorable people who honor their neighbors. And people in this country will uh, give witnessing for our forefathers who came to this country that they were the most kind people. What we hear in the media is not what's on the streets. They were kind people. But we have to uphold that so that our children see within us those same akhlaq, those same, uh, uh, those same uh, traits and characteristics of our parents and our forefathers and the people of Islam before us. And when, when, when people take in visitors and guests, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives expansions to them and openings to them from the unseen that they couldn't even imagine. That they couldn't even imagine. So people shouldn't be frightened of guests. People should await for a guest to arrive. Because the guest will come and only eat his own risk and leave with the sins of the household. It's a win-win situation. You don't give nothing and you, uh, you are cleared of everything. You don't give nothing and you're cleared of everything. You know, a man came to, the, uh, to Medina to Munawwara and he was a traveler. The Prophet ﷺ said, who's going to take this traveler home? One companion said, Ya Rasulullah, you take him home. Fine. He went home, said to his wife, what have you got? She said, we've got just food for the kids. The husband said, put the kids to sleep without food. Put the kids to sleep without food. Imagine somebody hearing that now in the homes. So she put them to sleep. And there was only enough food for that guest. Of course, there's no lamps, no lights, no nothing. They put out all, all the candles and they presented the food to him. He began to eat, thinking that the hosts also have food to eat, but they had nothing. They, f they slept on empty stomachs because they fed the guest. The next morning they woke up for Fajr, they went to the masjid, they met the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet ﷺ smiled at the host. And he said, Jibreel Ali Salam came to me last night and informed me of what you did, i.e. putting the kids to sleep and feeding the guest of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu And Allah revealed a verse of the Quran for you. And what's that? وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصَةً That they, i.e. the companions and the Muslims, would give preference to others over themselves even when they were in dire need. 